it doesn't take a genius to figure out it's the end of the world. And yet, it takes a real idiot to think that things are going to go on like this forever. You see, there's a lot of people that, on the one hand, when things are bad for them, like maybe having a bad day or a bad two days or three days, they'll say, oh yeah, Jesus is coming, the end of the world. And they'll jump on the bandwagon because it makes them feel better for a short period of time. And they'll say to themselves, yes, I know it's the end of the world. Things are really bad. But then when God begins to work with them or God blesses them in some way, they decide, oh, well, yeah, that was yesterday. I thought the end of the world. But today I think it's going to go on a little longer. Right. You see, I know how fickle people's emotions are, that their devotions are often mandated by their emotion. As long as they feel bad, they think, oh yeah, Jesus is coming back. Judgment's come to America. God is working on trying to get our attention. And so when they feel down, they look around and say, oh God, help us. But when they feel happy, when they have been rescued from whatever current immediate circumstances they're in, then they turn their back on God. And they say, well, it's not that bad, is it? And so the heart of man is often fickle. And it'll go by emotion rather than devotion to God. I've been thinking, you know, this coming Thanksgiving of asking my own family members whom I'm going to see about just some questions, you know, one simple question that, you know, I know what their answer is because I've been very much involved in their lives in the past, is to ask them, you know, is Jesus coming in your generation? Do you believe that Jesus is coming today or within the next five years or ten years? And I know the answer from each one of them. Well, no, and yet they know better. You see, When people were on the Titanic and they were told it was the unsinkable ship, they knew better. When people grew up under the tutelage of, say, a Hal Lindsey and they read the book, Late Great Planet Earth, when things were going wrong in Vietnam and things were like looking really strange because the country was protesting and there was a lot of bombings, even in America, but we didn't call them terrorism in those days, we just called them protesting. But bombings of our own embassies by our own people, you know, and fire things going on and people shooting each other and, you know, violent means being taken over the country. We said, oh no, the end of the world has come, the end of the world has come. You know, and we ran around and said, yeah, Jesus is coming again. And people believed it for a while. Then God blessed them and they, oh, well, you know, maybe not today, maybe it'll be later. So then we go through another crisis, you know, of economic proportions where, oh no, it's the end of the world, you know, we have no gas, we're, we're parked in line, you know, it's got to be terrible, God is coming, he's judging us. And so people turned to God and they repented of their ways and they asked God to help them and God did. God heard their cry and ministered to the country and helped them to come out of their depression and obsession with how bad it was at the time. So they turned away from God after he delivered them. And they looked towards their own family, their own development. And they began mega churches and mega ministries. They began to do things, you know, because they had the monies to do them. And then, oh no, the stock market's getting bad. Oh no, things are falling apart. Oh no, oh no. And things got worse rather than better. Because God once again brought judgment to America and said, look, I'm the one who causes these things to happen. Oh sure, you know, there's the God in this world and you can say the devil made me do it, but bluntly, I'm trying to get your attention. And so the people once again cried out to God and he heard their cry and delivered them. Then I remember at 9-11 when everyone else was so obsessed with this terrorist attack. All of a sudden the entire country had turned to God. There was flags flying and people repenting and people going to church and saying, oh, wow, we need help. God, help us deliver us. We need to do something quick. 
God is doing something that we don't understand. And so I remember looking around and saying, yeah, you know, I've seen this before, and I'm sure to see this again, but the entire country repented. And sure enough, they turned to God. And they thought, oh, well, now we have, oh, you know, focus on the family. We have all these great leaders that are leading the way. And the future looked bright and rosy. And everybody forgot to turn to God and give thanks. And they turned away from the Lord our God. You know, that bothers me. That concerns me that on their emotion, they were willing to be devoted and said things to God that, Perhaps they did, some of them, as I see many ministries, you know, that have risen and continued to grow and then fell. All of a sudden, right now, dropped off as though the end of the cliff had come. And then judgment came to the house of God, and great men of God began to be challenged by some of their lifestyle choices that they had done when they were blessed. And I saw men of God fail and fall, and some fall away completely, whether it be the bakers or, you know, anybody. It doesn't matter, some mega ministries sometimes fell. And you know, I see now, at the end of the age, great men of God warning, literally putting bluntly, hey, this is it. We have reached the end of our rope. Billy Graham particularly is making a mention of a point he's trying to say to America, look how bad it is, how sad America has become. And while I agree that in my life, I have seen every four years this happen, this cycle of, you know, like, oh no, how bad it is, oh no, oh no, oh no. It's like, this time, it doesn't take a genius to figure out. I think the end has come. It's time to pay the piper. And so you see America, once again, on the brink of destruction, on the brink of devastation, and some people seeking to cause America to pray for itself and to reach out to God one more time to see if there is mercy and forgiveness. But you know something interesting? Because of all this prosperity and all this positivity thinking, I don't see the nation repenting. I don't see a lot of people crying out to God. As a matter of fact, I see few saying that we need to repent and many saying we need a revival. They don't put the word repentance in because they don't want people to feel bad. They want people to feel good. We've got a wonderful plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. He wants to give you this, that, and the other thing. He wants to give you money. He wants to give you jobs. He wants to give you prosperity. But they don't mention jobs too much because after all, they know what the economy is like. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out somebody's pulling the wool over somebody's eyes. You know, today, I look at my day, you know, I, I read the weather report, you know, and I say, wow, we have a hundred degree weather coming? We have a week of it coming? You mean to tell me that there's going to be six days of a hundred plus degrees? Looks like global warming to me. Looks like climate change dramatically. Now, why it is and how it happened is pretty obvious to me. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. God is trying to get my attention. Now, I don't know if you figured that out, that God uses, because he already knows what's going to happen in the future, everything in your life to get your attention. He uses the day that the Lord has made to get your attention. He uses the sun in the sky for signs and wonders. He uses the moon at night for signs and wonders. He uses them for times and seasons. He created them for that purpose. So if God created these things and causes them to be in their place, then I don't see hurricanes and I don't see all these other things in creation as out of order because God knows they're going to happen. I see his order being established by we recognizing what is happening to us and turning our attention back to God. That's kind of what repentance was supposed to be. Right now it's pretty much this idea a lot of people are teaching about repentance is so that you can get what you want when you want it, right? After all, God is a sugar daddy and he's going to give you a wonderful life. Well, I have news. I'm more with Billy Graham and probably a little farther along than he is. You're not going to have a wonderful life. You're not. 
I want to tell you bluntly, right now, maybe the first time you're going to hear it, maybe, maybe you've already heard this before, but if you have children, you know, in these days, God help you. You need help. Because your children are growing up more violent than any other age with which man has raised children. And their soul is being sold to this whole idea of violence. That it's okay to take in all this emotional devastation of killing things, destroying things, removing things, and treating death as though it were just a commodity that we could buy and sell in the marketplace of our mind and not have it affect our children. Oh, it's okay, they're just playing. After all, it's just a game. And then we find children killing and we have guns in the house because it's our right privilege to have a gun. But a child isn't stupid, you know. The child knows how to get into your gun locker. And eventually, we've noticed they do. And they see that you're worried about, you know, the end of the world, so you've got all your guns and, you know, all your stuff set aside. But they don't see you turning to God, so they reject your ideas of God. They see God as a violent God that they can do and cause God's plan to be done by their own means. And I wonder in this age of children growing up with men and women of God, what are we teaching the children to become? Because it is the end of the world. The children you have are going to see Armageddon unless God spares them in some rapture or kills them off and they die before the Antichrist comes and the false messiah. I wonder what kind of message we're giving our children. I look at the nation and I say, you know what's interesting is that the Christians who got involved in politics are now postponing their ideas of what they want done so that we can retake our country. You know, we, we, we may not get it in 2012, but we'll go for 2016. And they postpone outward what they want to do in a nation that needs to repent. That concerns me. I see Greg Laurie, you know, taking the message in the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, to thousands of churches and asking for a national revival or a national evangelistic outreach, you know, and I think, well, that's good. But then I also wonder, how much good does it do when the people really don't follow up and teach their people what to do when the end of the world has come? Do you know that the end of the world is coming? Do you know that you don't have time anymore? That God is not postponing the battle of the ghetto? That it shall be done according to His will in His perfect timing? And that it's coming very soon to the nation of Israel? Which means that all the countries around are getting prepared for war. All the countries around Israel are being prepared for the war the very last war. Oh, but we're going to see, you know, the Ezekiel War first. We're going to see, how about we're going to see a skirmish instead of a war? People are looking for these outrageous signs that they'll say, oh, now I know there's a God. When they reject the obvious truth that's in their own back door. God is real. God is trying to get your attention. He sent you in this year most especially than more than any other year, certain realizations you should know. If you're in a drought-stricken area, you should recognize drought is from God. He's trying to get your attention. If you have read the news lately and you see all these wars and rumors of wars that have been going on for three years of the current president's regime, that, oh, Israel's gonna bomb Iran. They're gonna bomb them. They're gonna bomb them. And for three years, you've heard that. You know what wars and rumors of wars is because you're probably getting tired of hearing that. Oh, they're going to do it. But they didn't do it, did they? Because it's a rumor war. Or you've seen the Arab Spring they talk about and how governments changed overnight. Wow, the people rose up and declared democracy. Is that a godly thing? Oh, you're right. It's not godly because they chose Islam or they chose some other way instead of our American dream and our American way. They didn't 
choose the right way. So we don't really want them to be, you know, like part of us. We want democracy for them, but we don't want them the ability to choose the wrong way. We want them to choose the right way. God is lining up everything according to his word. And it's done according to his own choice. Because God's going to get the world's attention. And it's his contention that you can go to hell if you want to. You can go to hell if you choose to. You can take America with you if you really choose to ignore the warnings that God has given and now the flat out judgment that God has brought. Judgment has begun. Make no mistake about it. The very soul of a Christian is being torn apart in violent ways to cause him to be angry constantly, to fight for what is right in Christian theology, to go against the humanistic flavor of the world, to stand up and demonstrate that by intellect we can argue a person into a relationship with God. And yet, Hasn't Satan already won if we haven't demonstrated the love of God to that person? Isn't Satan already winning the war when the Christians are fighting amongst themselves about what is right and what is wrong? Isn't Satan laughing at the Christian church because he doesn't have to do anything about them? They've lost their effectiveness because they forgot how to love. I stopped recording for a brief period of time because I saw what was happening. I really didn't know what to say about it. I prayed, I asked God, I said, God, you know, this isn't the joyful, positive message that I like to inspire people today to take a look. And the Lord spoke to me and said, but look up, your salvation draweth nigh. And I used to look up and rejoice that my salvation brought that. Oh yes, praise the Lord, you're coming again. Now I look up and I see my salvation drawn nigh and I think, Oh God, save us. Oh God, deliver us. And now I understand better when Jesus rode into the crowds that were declaring to him, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because, you see, the words Hosanna aren't some great rejoicing word. They're the cry of a heart saying, God, save us. That's what Hosanna means. Did you know that? You sing the songs, Hosanna, 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 you know, whatever song you may sing that has Hosanna in it. But really, the word is Hoshana. 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 Save us. Now. That's what it means. And at the time that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, they weren't crying out in some great fervor of love and excitement saying, Oh boy, here comes the king. No, they were saying, God deliver us. God help us. God save us now. Isn't that what we need? To rethink our Christianity, our age of grace that we've lived in? Don't we need to look a little harder at ourselves and our lifestyles, our choices, and say to ourselves, do we need to be saved from ourselves? Have we gotten so prosperous that we've let our devotions fail and fall away? And our emotion is one of either thanksgiving and, oh God, thank you, I'm so happy, happy, happy. And then when the house is knocked down, we're not so happy, happy, happy because we're now looking at, uh-oh, now what do we do? And then we blame it on the devil or someone else instead of our own choices we made. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of looking at looking up knowing our salvation draws nigh and saying, God help us. God save us. God deliver us. Not just from the world, but from ourselves. Maybe you don't agree and that's your choice. But you know, I don't know about you, I pray that whether you understand it or not, that you would be found worthy to be spared all these things that have come upon the world, to try them in their hour of temptation, 
to prove the words that they said out of their own mouth of whether they will follow God and follow Jesus at the end of this age as much as they follow Jesus at the beginning of their faith. Because you see, the end of all things is at hand. And Jesus is coming soon. Very soon. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Are you going to, oh no, oh no, the end is here. Or are you going to do the TiVo and thank God for the greatness of what you're doing? How wonderful your life is and how positive because you've got football season coming. You're going to become a Christian because, after all, it's football season. Or are you going to do something a little different? See this? This is called dirt. Jewish custom in the old days was to take dirt, sackcloth, and ashes. And you'd put on the sackcloth, which is kind of like a gunny sack. And Middle Eastern people still do that to this day. You can see it over right now in Syria where people are crying out, wailing, and throwing dirt in the air. But they take some dirt, they rub it in their hands, then they take it and they throw it up in the air, and they throw it over their head, and they throw it constantly, crying out to God, 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 no, God, God. And their heart is poured out to God. Maybe you don't know that tradition. Maybe you don't believe in that expression. Maybe to you, dirt is just dirt. You don't want to get dirty. But you know, you're dealing with how bad our sin is. Maybe getting out and doing something a little stupid or silly might make it a little more real to you how God sees our lives. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for a dirt pile to just go bury myself in and recognize how sinful I am and how I need to repent. Maybe you do too. Maybe you need to take personal responsibility for the people you know that you haven't warned that this is the end of the age. Maybe you know someone that you haven't told Jesus about praying for them and then went and told them about Jesus because you've been praying for them. Maybe you have some unfinished business you need to take care of. Because I'll tell you this, you don't have much time left. You may get killed by some violent means before the rapture or you may drop dead of a heart attack. But I can tell you this, you're not going to have a wonderful life. You're not going to get prosperous. You're not going to get rich. You're not going to be famous. As a matter of fact, all these things are winding down and heading down. We're in a spiral that's what we call declinating. It's going downward, not upward. And the reality is, is that God wants it that way. The Christian influence is going down, not up. The Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from the world. Gradually, the effect that each individual person who is salt and light in the world is being removed so that he that restrains will restrain no more. And then all hell is going to break loose. And if you don't see that coming now, you won't see it coming when it happens soon because it's already begun. The end is here.